Then something happened. We had to deal with spam, clickbait, fake news, and data misuse. That's going to change. Facebook's been promising change for months since we learned it was used to influence voters in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Meanwhile, Instagram was being heralded as a politics-free place to see nice photos of beaches and fancy meals. People began flocking to Instagram, the number of users jumping by hundreds of millions in two years as the headlines pronounced Instagram was the healthy version of Facebook, even though it's been owned by Facebook since 2012. But are the problems that plagued Facebook now coming to Instagram? Remember, first for Facebook, it was Cambridge Analytica when the world found out Facebook data was being used in ways we didn't realize or agree to and had been used to influence the last U.S. election. Remember Zuckerberg's testimony in front of the U.S. Congress in April. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. Since Facebook has hired thousands of people to moderate its content, looking for fake news and divisive content, it's also created new tools for people to see where political ads are coming from and who paid for them. But then Vice News put those claims to the test. They reported they were able to manipulate those tools to create ads that said they were paid for by Vice President Mike Pence, the Islamic State. Then they tried again. This time, we tried to get approval from Facebook to post ads posing as all 100 current U.S. senators. And it worked. Facebook gave us approval to run ads supposedly paid for by all 100 senators in minutes. Some of Facebook's efforts have trickled down to Instagram. It now has a paid for by tool too. We'll see how that works. Some of Facebook's other problems have trickled down too. People like Alex Jones, known for his conspiracy theories on Infowars, was banned from Facebook for spreading hate, but his account is still active on Instagram. And after that synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh, the New York Times reported more than 11,000 posts on Instagram, all linked to one anti-Semitic hashtag. Instagram tells us they are actively monitoring and removing content that violates their policies like hate speech. But on the eve of the U.S. midterms, Instagram is blossoming with hashtags. Those vacation photos, well, they have some new, very political friends. And Takara Small is with us now. She is our tech contributor. So, Takara, how did this happen? How did... Wasn't Instagram supposed to be the healthy version of Facebook? What happened? Yeah, it definitely has that reputation. I think Instagram on the whole is a much more positive place than some of the other social media platforms. But as people are booted off of, you know, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, they're looking for a new home and Instagram is that. I think it also provides a great opportunity because Instagram is all about pictures and photos are worth a thousand words. So you can get away with a lot more on Instagram than but you could potentially get away with on most other accounts. So the midterms are in just a couple of days. Yes. What are you seeing on yeah. Instagram about that? I mean, I'm seeing a lot of fake news, and I'm seeing a lot of examples of people resharing content without understanding sometimes that it's satire, that it's a joke, that it's not true, or just republishing information that they think uh, aligns with their political beliefs. But that's what Facebook got in trouble for, to, to an extreme version. This wasn't yeah. supposed to happen here. Yeah. I think, um, you know, Facebook has a lot more resources when it comes to deciphering and looking out for fake news. They have these partnerships with news organizations. They have a whole moderation team now that's been created because of what happened in the U.S. election that are dedicated to looking for fake news. And yet there's still, we're reading, this stuff still slipping yes. through. Well, because it's like whack-a-mole. It's like whack-a-mole. There's a, there's a new account. There's so many accounts out there, and there are so many other groups who are using false information to kind of influence the election. It's incredibly hard to keep up with that. But whereas Facebook has been very much in the news regarding fake news, regarding all of this false information, Instagram hasn't been so much. They're really great with their anti-bullying measures. They've been very proud and open about that. But when it comes to really acknowledging fake news, I think they need a little bit more, more work on that. One of the big differences between Facebook and Instagram is Instagram doesn't have a share button. Yes. Like Facebook. Yes, which is good and bad in a way. So it's good in a way because you can't easily reshare something. On Twitter, that's how things go viral. You see something that really evokes some type of emotion and you immediately hit retweet, right? Whereas, whereas on Instagram, it takes a little bit more time to do that. You have to... But aren't they talking about getting one? About installing one? I know, one? I know. And I think that... I 
think you're going to see a lot of the features that you find on Facebook slowly migrate to Instagram, especially since the founders of Instagram recently left. So there's going to be more integration. I think the reshare button would be good because I see so many amazing things and I want to reshare that. But then I'm also worried the fact that it'll take, it'll be that much easier for people to reshare fake information or fake news or harmful images. So huge political year in the States, but in Canada too. Do you see yes. Instagram having a political impact here? I do. Instagram is going to play a huge role, especially when it comes to young voters. And you're seeing a lot of, in the States and, and here in Canada somewhat, a lot of campaigns dedicated to getting youth to the polls. But if you're getting them to the polls and they have the wrong information, that's just as dangerous. They need to have unbiased news. Takara, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. We'll see what happens on Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you. Takara Small is the Weekly's Tech Contributor.